Hey there, and welcome to a special episode of Chlorine the Professor. Today, I'm going to do another special on how I create episodes of Chlorine the Professor. And I use a variety of different tools. Now, how I originally used to create this show is I would just use a program called Plotagon. Now, you may have not have heard of it. It's uh, relatively new. It's, it's not been around for that long. But Plotagon is a animation tool which is not all that different from, say, uh, not, um, Extra Normal, what's called Normal now, and another program called, that's been around for a much longer time called Go Animate. And it's fairly simple. Now, the episode one finale, the season one finale that I created, was done in two parts. And let me load part one here. Now, before actually going in and creating this, I'll do a lot of research. Uh, the show is focused on the gaming industry. But it uses that as gaming industry and gaming in general and it uses it as a springboard to talk about other subjects uh, one thing one episode i did was about drm and how to change the laws concerning drm and patents and copyrights i encourage people to get out and volunteer in politics to get involved to uh, contact and speak with their representatives and their senators. You know, you, you can do that. You can call your senator. You can call your representative. You probably won't get to talk to them, but you'll at least get to leave a message for them. They'll, they will record a message for you, for them, basically, and then you can tell them what your opinion on things are, saying, you know, you want patent reform. You want reform, copyright reform. You know, you want the laws changed for DRM so that, you know, for your personal use, you can circumvent it so that it, which you're supposed to be able to do, actually, but they've made it illegal. And anything else, anything else of relevance, you know, to get out there and get involved, stop sitting there and complaining in forums. And actually get out there and do something about it. That's what this show is about. It's about encouraging you to get out there and do something about it. That you're not powerless. You don't have to just sit there and take it. You know, if you're over, if you're 18 or older, get out there, volunteer in politics. You know, uh, since the two candidates in the RNC and DNC are pretty much both unelectable go to the green party put your support behind jill stein you know if you're already a bernie sanders supporter why not support her her platform is virtually identical to bernie's platform's virtually identical to bernie's and you know and she won't take nothing off of nobody. She won't take nothing off of Fox News. I watched her take somebody apart on Fox News before. Verbally take one of the people apart on Fox News. She wouldn't, she won't take their, their crap. But, um, that's what this show's about. It's getting that message out. And it also touches on a lot more than just, you know, getting involved in politics and other things. I add in a little bit of my own my own take on spirituality and belief systems. So I follow a what I call spiritual science, which is a combination of a bunch of different things. Um, the the Tao and Law of Attraction, Law of One, different beliefs such as that. A lot of that has really transformed my life. It's gotten to me to the point to where I'm able to do this. And I'm doing videos for another channel, for the Gamers Bay channel. Where I'm doing videos for that. 
I'm a partner with that channel, and I'll be a partner with another channel coming soon. Where I'll be doing videos for them. Uh, mainly, um, mainly stuff involving Far Cry 3, 4, possibly Far Cry Primal. Um, for Gamers Bay, I would be doing stuff like... I've already done a whole bunch of stuff for them. And it's gotten to me to that point. And I interject some of that into each episode. And a lot of... Uh, a lot of the episodes... Require a lot of research. Uh, watching news, reading forums. Uh, just a couple of days of doing that. It's not really that hard a work, but it takes time. You know, and watching a lot of videos, news from IGN... And other sources, Nerdist, uh, watching reviews, the variety of things. So that, that takes a couple of days. And then it takes about a day, maybe sometimes two days, to create an episode here in Plotagon. And that depends on how well Plotagon behaves. Uh, the way you do this is it's created in Unity. This is a... This is all created using the Unity engine, and it's all live rendered. See, this is all live rendering. You just move the assets around, place them in places. Disengaging security protocols on all doors. I hope you know what you are doing, Professor. And it uses text to speech built in. Doesn't use the text to speech that is on the operating system you're on. It uses its own text to speech program. Now, they recently changed the text to speech program, and I don't like it, but, you know, it is what it is for now. Uh, I'm looking at alternatives to this. Um, there are other avenues I can go to. I can't afford subscription fees right now to use GoAnimate or um, Normal at the moment. Those are like $50 a month, and that's a little much for me on my limited budget. And there's, there is Poser, but that would require a great deal more work to do episodes. Uh, if you are familiar with the um, Rooster Teeth series Ruby, then you know what Poser is capable of. It's it's a pretty powerful program. It's mainly for you know setting up characters, posing them, moving them around, but it can do a great deal more. I mean, entire episodes of Ruby are created in it, so. It's a pretty powerful tool, but as I said, it would require a lot more work because I would have to animate all the scenes, create all the characters, and then there's the problem of the dialogue. And I don't have voice actors, I can't hire voice actors, and so unless... Unless uh, things change and I'm able to start, you know, bringing in more revenue to be able to upgrade the tools and my hardware and everything, I'll have to rely on stuff like this program in order to create those episodes. Uh, building an episode in um, of Chloe and the Professor in Plotagon is pretty simple. You set up your scene here. This is the command bridge, and you tell it what characters are in there. You tell it where they're, where they're standing in the scene. And then you can set up things like music, sound effects, and then dialogue. And then you have emotional animations for each character. How they move, look, and act while they're speaking. And the text-to-speech. All text-to-speech programs except for the really high-end stuff that you'll hear on phone systems have the same quirk. Certain words and certain combinations will cause 
the text-to-speech program to slur badly and mispronounce. And what you have to do is you have to use punctuation to make the program, make the text-to-speech pause. And in the arrays and the cache that it builds for each, in the arrays and cache that it builds for each sentence, it clears it and it continues on and it speaks correctly from that point forward. And it can be a little frustrating trying to get it to speak correctly. Certain words have to be spelled out phonetically because it, because it will say them the wrong way. Because in the English language, we have some words that are, you know, spelled one way, but can be pronounced two different ways. And it will only pronounce one way. It's not, it doesn't have sentence, context, it doesn't, it's not contextually aware of this in the sentence. So it will not speak the correct the, the speak the word in the correct what in the correct pronunciation based on the context of the sentence it doesn't have that of much analysis really advanced programs uh do really advanced you know expensive text to speech programs do but the less expensive ones like the the free ones you can get uh, JAWS, which is a text-to-speech program for the blind, has the same problem. And the only way around it is to phonetically spell certain words to get it to pronounce correctly and to use punctuation in places to make the, uh, the text-to-speech pause so that it flushes the cache and continues on speaking correctly or pauses the array and speaks correctly because it puts all every sentence into an array and it processes it all at once and that can cause issues. Some sentences come out correctly, some don't, and so I have to go through each one. After I write each line of dialogue, I have to... I hope you know what you are doing. Perf play it. And make sure that it comes out right. And if it comes out right, I go on to the next dialogue. And this can take, you know, a few hours to do. And there's not a whole lot you can do with the scene. You can't move the characters around in the scene. If you want to reposition them, you have to create a whole new scene to do that. So you can't tell the characters to walk around. In the other tools, in normal and in um, Go Animate, you can. You can tell them to walk around a scene. You can't in this. No. So it's, it's, it's a little limited. It's pretty limited in what it can do. Wish it was capable of more, but this is all I've got to work with. And there are other tools out there, but there are a lot more advanced there's a, a steeper learning curve with some of them like poser is a really advanced tool so it would take me a while to get up to speed with that uh there's there is also um source movie maker but there's the issue of needing to create the assets for the models of the different characters that i use and i'm not a model maker um, I don't have any 3D editing skills. You know, I could possibly try to create something in um, in Blender. But I'm not really that good at it. And I would have to commission somebody to create characters for me. And I don't have the money for that right now. So I have to basically work with what's available. This is the video editor I use. I used to use um, Windows Movie Maker and I did not like it. I tried using some of the video editors on Linux. I think there was something wrong with my installation and a lot of them would not work correctly. A lot of them had trouble 
processing videos that were longer than 10 minutes. They would often crash if a video was longer than 10-15 minutes. Now this one is far more robust. This is a free program, by the way. It's uh, HitFilm 3 Express. And they give you the base application for free, which is, that's what you're seeing here. This is the base application for free. It's a non-linear video editor, much like Adobe Premiere. In fact, if you're familiar with Adobe Premiere, then you'll notice that this layout is very similar. This is your preview for uh, your media. This is your preview for your media. And then this is your workspace, your preview for what you're actually editing. Disengage. And you can scrub through the video. You can zoom in and out. And if I move over here, zoom in. See this block here? That's an effect. It's one of these effects. Let me show you. That fade. And I've got another one that I used near here, near the end. Let me scroll down. I use another one right here. See it? Sort of that lateral line Lucas, that classic Lucas film. Classic Lucasfilm wipe to the side. Basically, uh, you can do stuff like that. Now, you can do a little more advanced stuff. In fact, let me show you something a little more advanced. Okay. This is a composited shot. Now, some of you may be familiar with compositing in video with, you know, stuff like After Effects. This program has some of that capability. You can, you know, include video effects such as... I used a video effect for the episode where the executive turned into the corporate corrupter. I used an effect that created a you know, a blast of sparks, a shower of sparks that came out. First time I ever tried that uh, to try and make it work. It wasn't great, great, but, you know, it was the best that I could do with the tools that I had. There are add-ons to this. Uh, some are, you know, really cheap, like four bucks, and others are really expensive. The base program itself... Uh, is very usable without any extra add-ons. And then the other add-ons let you do a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, there's there's a ton of functionality. So they give you the program itself for free, and then if you need extra functionality, you just buy what you need. You, so you don't have to pay $500, five dollars $600 for a program, and you only use, like, a handful of its features and capabilities. You just buy what you need with it. And compositing is one of the things that you can do. Go back to the regular editing scene. You see I just have one clip and I have an audio effect here. That's just a fade. And then this is the this is the composited sequence. And you see these elements, the layers that I'm placing here, the text, and 
the image. There's an image here that I'm using. That's the toxic logo here. And then the Gamers Bay logo and more text. And then the music in the background. And it looks sort of like this. And that's it. And you can create stuff like this. And this is, this is stuff that you can't do. You can't really do stuff like this with um, Windows Movie Maker. And so I, that's just how I create the endings and openings for all of the, you know, an old Gamer Plays series over on the Gamers Bay channel, which is where a lot of my uh, Let's Play videos are going now because I'm partnered with them. And I'm going to be working on, you know, some new opening and closing sequences for Chloe and the Professor for, for Season 2. Probably going to skip next week because No Man's Sky is coming. And I want to do some videos for that. Perhaps maybe a live stream of the, um, a live stream of the my first, uh, first hour playthrough of the game because I've been waiting for that game for forever. I've been waiting for a game like that. I mean, I think might be my entire life and stuff that I've been hearing about it, especially I haven't watched any of the leaked footage, but the spoiler free descriptions of what was seen tells me this game, that game will be everything that we've been expect that we've been wanting and more. So, pretty excited about that. But uh, uh, this is what I use for editing episodes of Chloe and the Professor. Now, and before that, it uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of research. Uh, watching videos, reading forums, uh, reading what people are saying in different Google Plus communities, the gaming community, the PC uh, gaming communities, even though even what people are talking about in the uh, Gamers Bay community, also what people are posting, what's trending, what's what's the latest thing in the news, and finding you know what would make a good episode. And, like, the whole thing with the Oculus Rift happened. So I made that episode about the Oculus Rift. And, um, there was the stuff with the DRM with Oculus. And I did that DRM episode where they were preventing other, head other headsets from working with games that were made for the Rift. And that's what I basically make episodes about. I make episodes that are relevant to stuff that's going on in the gaming industry at that particular time. And, you know, and how it impacts everybody. How it impacts us. And then I encourage people to get out, you know, and do stuff about it. Not just complain in the forums, but actually go out and do something about it. That's that's what Cloning Professor is about, you know. And I put together a um, I put together a video, basically show you, you know, what it's like researching and working on researching an episode of Cloning the Professor. Let's watch that. So you see, it's exhausting work. I mean, and typical episode takes about two days of research and an, an entire day, maybe even two and a half days of work, be working with this thing and dealing with the quirks of the text and speech software. 
So that's how I create episodes of Chlorine the Professor. For now. Uh, that may change in the future. Once I've got some more revenue going on. And I'm able to afford better tools. I may switch over to something like Go Animate or Normal. You know, if I can afford the $50 a month, you know, fee of using the software to create and up create episodes. I'd, I'd like to have better tools. Um, stuff like Source Movie Maker and Poser would be a lot more advanced, but also require a much steeper learning curve. And it would take me a while to learn enough to be able to make an episode. And that might delay this. And another reason why I do it like this is because you may have noticed, you know, I'm, I ramble on, change subjects quickly. Oh. I'm working on it. I'm getting a lot better, as you can tell. Staying focused on one thing. Being able to speak on camera. Being able to speak in a microphone properly. It's partially nerves. You know, I'm not used to it. And I'm getting better. Uh, especially in the uh, gameplay videos or over on Gamers Bay. So, it's a little bit of therapy for me, too, in a way. And I like doing it, most of all. I like making these shows for you guys. I mean, you know, now, with my partnership with uh, Gamers Bay, I'm monetizing the videos, but... No. Um, I never started it out... Or the money to begin with. Be nice to have it. Be able to get better tools to make better episodes. But, um, I did this because I wanted to help. Because I genuinely wanted, you know, to get out there and tell people, you know, this stuff is happening. And this is what you can do about it. You know, you don't have to just sit there and complain in the forum. You can actually get out and actually make a difference. Yes, this is about gaming. And ultimately, you know, it's not as important as, like, having food on a table or anything like that. But it can lead into things like that. I mean, getting someone involved in politics using a show about video games to encourage someone to get into politics or get in or volunteer and maybe even running for office themselves in the future. You know, that could have a profound effect on all of us. Who knows? I mean, that person could become the next president of the United States someday and really bring some positive change to this world, this country. And that is why this show exists. To encourage young people to get out there, get involved, to tell them they're not powerless. They're stronger than they think they are. They have a powerful voice. They just have to learn to use it. And that's why I do this. You know, it's a show about video games. But the video game aspect is just a springboard to talk about this stuff. Talk, you know, about more important subjects. And I also interject a little bit of my own uh, philosophy and my own spiritual beliefs into it. I follow the Law of Attraction, Law of One, the Tao... And a lot of that has changed my life. And don't try to evan I'm not evangelizing any of it. You know, if it works for you, it works for you. It's not something that you are required 
to learn, required to know. It is not a religion. It is not, you know, a sin to not believe any of it. You know, I've got people who, you know, know people who don't believe that the law of attraction is real and it, they're not required to believe it's real. And that's the point. In religion, you're required to believe it. If you don't, then you're a sinner. But, uh, I digress. Well, this has been a special episode of Cloying the Professor, where I show you how I make the episodes. Uh, there will be a uh, short hiatus of about a week. As I said, uh, No Man's Sky is going to dominate my life next week. And then I will pick up with Season 2. And here's to having a great season. Second season. And I know that uh, <laughs> the way the gaming industry is, um, there's the way, the way it is these days. I'm not going to have a shortage of things to talk about. A shortage of opinions to have. All right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.